My name is Matt Erb, and I'm the director of urban forestry at Tree Pittsburgh. And we're a nonprofit organization here in Pittsburgh, uh, working to protect and restore Pittsburgh's urban forests uh, through community tree planting, advocacy, maintenance, and education. Uh, we are at the Tree Pittsburgh uh, Seedling Nursery, uh, which is in uh, the city of Pittsburgh on three vacant lots. Uh, we're growing these trees primarily for our restoration projects, so we're, we're shooting for a tree that's three to four feet tall and uh, can be planted on our riverbanks, trails, parks, uh, woodland restoration projects. Uh, well, we, we do grow a number of trees with edible fruit, uh, and we've been slowly getting into the community gardening, community orcharding uh, movement, and so we've done a few community orchards uh, that are in association with community gardens here in the city. We've tried to stick with some native uh, species using serviceberry and pawpaw, also some nut trees, uh, hazelnuts as well, and we're uh, always doing more research and looking for other examples of what fruit trees would do well in our environment. My name is Marisa Mannheim and I'm the director of communi community projects for Grow Pittsburgh. We're a small urban agriculture nonprofit in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. And my work is mostly helping new communities to urban agriculture think through the challenges and ideas and possibilities of starting food growing projects where they live. So how many projects like this do you guys have in Pittsburgh? So our goal is to get the garden groups totally self-sufficient within two years. Um, so when you ask me how many that we have, um, we've started 19 projects, 19 different kinds of food garden projects um, in and around Pittsburgh. But we don't have any of those because they're all self-managed by the community at this point. To what extent have people started to plant fruit trees? Fruit trees are a part of what food production is. Um, but with a lot of people coming at it from a more urban background, um, not always thinking of them. So it's usually something that kind of dawns on people once we get the bare bones of let's get in some frames for the veggie production area. And then they start looking around and saying, okay, well, what else can we do? Um, and that's usually why we generally wait until the second year to start talking about different fruit trees that we'd like to plant. And we'll either plant them in the second year, in the spring, or in the fall. Um, and then we'll offer kind of more soft at a distance support as the garden learns how to maintain and take care of those trees. So this is our hoop house and uh, we plant a lot of our, we put a lot of our smaller seedlings in here for the winter to protect them from the uh, colder temperatures. And uh, we have a lot of different oaks, uh, some different spruces here, but uh, one of our harder trees to grow is the native papa. And, uh, we collect a lot of pawpaw seeds. We plant them in these larger uh, containers. We probably plant about 30 or so pawpaws in each container. This isn't and a pawpaw, is it? This is a pawpaw. This yes. is a pawpaw. These are lots of individual pawpaws growing in here. Oh, I see. So how many seeds would you plant in a pot like this? We plant about 30 seeds in that pot, and we get uh, the germination rate is pretty variable. And depending on where the seed is collected, what variety it is, uh, you can see we probably have at least... Uh, we probably have 15 here, I think, yeah. that survived out of the 30, so right. that's pretty good. It's pretty good, yes. Okay, so here you plant them here first, and then what happens to your pawpaw trees? Uh, and then we've uh, we've been working on which is the best time to pot them up. And pawpaws seem to be pretty finicky. They so far haven't liked being potted up in the spring. Uh, they don't really like being potted up in the fall, so we're, we're experimenting with different soils, different root pruning techniques. So here we have oh, a pawpaw. Nice. And this is about a uh, three-year-old pawpaw. At wow, this, point. this is incredible! Now look, its roots are pretty happy. It is. Yeah. yeah. And pawpaws have a really uh, unique fragrance when you uh, disturb the plant, rustle the leaves around. It kind of smells like a pepper plant. Oh, um, interesting. Yeah. These look nice and healthy. Wow. When do you put them out uh, of the greenhouse? What's the next step from here? Uh, so the next step from here is we'll, we'll pot them up, grow them for another year, and then they'll probably be the right size for our restoration projects or for a community planting. <laughs> this is um, American persimmon. It's the mander variety, and we planted this as a bare root. Um, so, and this is really crappy soil here. It was all former apartment building, um, and when they 
took down the apartment building, they just buried all the rubble and put a bunch of fill down. And it was, um, it was, it's really hard to work in. That's why we built all those frames for the raised beds. So we weren't sure how these bare root plants were gonna do and they've clearly done really well. Um, so we planted these in the fall of 2012 and it's now um, summer of 2014 and we're getting our first fruit on this persimmon. And um, it looks like it's gonna develop at least you know, five or six fruits this year, which is probably good for the health of the plant not to overdo it. Um, and then next year they might have a pretty good crop. Um, but the, the fruit itself is um, comes ripe in September or October, depending on the variety and the season. But um, it's when it's ripe, it should be practically disintegrating. Um, and it's like this gooey mess that you just shove your face in. <laughs> and they're very, very sweet. Um, they have a really high sugar content and a very nice, subtle, complex, sweet flavor. It's one of my favorite fruits. Um, so tell me about this native persimmon. What does the fruit taste like? How long does it take for it to fruit? Uh, that's a really good question. I, I, from what I've read, it's about seven to ten years to fruit, and there are male and female uh, trees within the persimmon family. And uh, these trees are probably about three years old. The first two years, persimmons seem to be very slow growing. Uh, these ones were actually uh, uh, eaten by rabbits last winter, and they've responded extremely well, putting out about four feet of growth uh, this year. And the fruit is really interesting. Um, they are variable depending on the tree, anywhere from maybe an inch in diameter to two inches in diameter. And they can only be eaten after the first frost of the season. And the first frost, helps break down some of the really astringent and bitter uh, tasting chemicals in the fruit and really converts them into sugars. Uh, so you have to wait quite late in the season. And the range of flavors is uh, pretty great. Some trees have more of a mango, peach type flavor. Uh, other trees uh, can just be pulpy and kind of bland tasting. So really depends, I think, on the site conditions and the individual tree. Now tell me the difference between growing from seed and grafted trees. Do you grow everything here from seed? Uh, no, we do have a few grafted trees, uh, primarily evergreens, and, uh, uh, and if we eventually want to get into growing more grafted fruit trees. Uh, but since our primary goal here is for restoration projects, uh, we are growing fruit trees from seed so that we have a wide genetic diversity in our parks and riverbank plantings. If there is one thing that you can tell people about why they should plant native trees, what would that be? You know, native trees come with a lot of uh, a lot of other things that you might not get with a non-native tree. So, uh, pawpaw, for example, attract a specific species of butterfly that will only feed and lay eggs on pawpaws. And so, if you're bringing in a, a non-native tree, you're not going to have those. Uh, those butterflies or insects that thrive on those plants uh, when you plant them in your garden. So uh, a lot of our trees, oak trees, uh, magnolias, again, they all have dozens of species of insects that are, are beneficial for the, the trees themselves, but for the greater environment. And so bringing those trees into your yard also brings along uh, a whole ecosystem. There's here, but there, is, there has been quite a bit of feeding on these leaves. I'm wondering if it's that butterfly larvae. Just have a 